Good morning. As always, it is a joy and a blessing to be in worship with you, whether you're in person or joining us online. We are so glad to have you here today. A uh, couple of brief announcements for this morning. Um, you'll note on your announcement sheet that our office hours have shifted a little bit this week to accommodate the holiday that is tomorrow. Um, so if you're planning on stopping by tomorrow, bring your key. Um, also, after worship today, there will be sweet rolls. We're changing it up from the birthday cake to birthday sweet rolls. So make sure you stop downstairs uh, and join us for a tasty treat and some coffee. And uh, we'll wish a happy birthday and happy anniversary to all those celebrating in May. Um, also, I neglected to put it in the bulletin, but next week after worship, we will have our youth making uh, posters to advertise for a car wash that we will be holding at the end of June to uh, raise some funds to help uh, support the youth ministry programs that we have going on here. And then also, as we are finding this warmer weather and folks are starting to do some spring cleaning and bringing out their summer clothes, um, Janet Sanka is looking for summer spring type clothes that are, you know, gently used, something you would give to a friend is her phrase she always uses. Um, tennis shoes, men's, women's, children, the whole kit and caboodle. Um, so she will be picking those up sometime this week um, to take those down to where they are needed. So if you have anything left to bring of summer and spring clothes to donate, please bring them by the church um, and we'll make sure that she gets them. Other announcements for the good of the order? There's a few upcoming events and whatnot in your bulletin, but I will leave you to read that at your leisure. Yes, it's even written down on my list and I just didn't <laughs> read it. Um, if you have any easy to follow recipes, that's what you were looking for? Wonderful. If you have any easy to follow recipes, um, we are collecting those to make a St. John college graduate friendly recipe book to offer to our recent college grads as a congratulations and sending them on their way into adulthood where they have to learn how to make their own food every day. Um, so anything that you've got, it can be as simple as, um, I won't give away the idea that I was given this morning, but as simple as can be, um, or a little bit more complicated, whatever you've got, we would love to include it. Um, and give those to Valerie Cardinal. If you need her contact information, we can get that to you. Now did I forget anything? Wonderful. All right, with that then, let us take a moment to quiet our hearts and minds for worship. As we begin our worship, we celebrate this day of Holy Trinity. The Holy Trinity Festival is a fairly late comer to the church festivals. It's only about a thousand years old. Um, but as we celebrate Holy Trinity Sunday, we celebrate the many ways that God um, brings us into experience of God. And most specifically, we think about how we talk about God as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Um, and so we have a difficult time trying to explain that whole one in three, three in one thing, partially because it is far above our human heads to understand it. But I always like the song that we're going to sing as our gathering song as a reminder that the Trinity is something of a dance, a dance of understanding and misunderstanding, and also a dance of relationship and community that we are invited to participate in as God invites us into God's presence. So let us stand and join our voices together. And hymn number 412. Oh, man. 
Pentecost to tell the Savior's name. With all the Eucharist in this, our next hour is most. Go tell the The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <laughs> and blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, and whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. In God's goodness, we are free to claim the gift of God's mercy. We are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, 
We worship your glory, eternal three and one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. <coughs> then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. A reading from Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and would our younger worshipers come on up, please. (laughs) Good morning, good morning, good morning. Everyone's so dressed up today. Is there? My, 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 I love it. Maybe it's the hot weather. Dresses are a little cooler. You didn't wear a dress today? That's fair. That's your choice. I didn't either. So I have a question for you. This is going to be a dangerous one. How would you describe God? What do you think? Yes. Loving. I love it. Great. What else? Helping. What else? Yeah. Caring. What? What? Heroic. Nice. What? Heroic? Like, have you ever heard of Superman? Like Superman, but way cooler. What else? How else do we describe God? Fire. For like Pentecost. Yes. Or like a soothing pacifier, huh? Yeah. Fire. Oh, fighter. Excellent. So now here's a different question, but very related. What do you think God sounds like? Does anyone want to try to be the voice of God? What do you think, Kate? What do you think, Lydia? Caring and kind, okay. I'm doing everything at once? Was that a, okay, that was just a scratching the head. Do you think God sounds like, I am God, or I am God, or I am God? The first one? What about any or all of those? Maybe. Or all of them mixed together, yes. Like every voice we could ever imagine all mixed together. 
Sounds like God. I don't think I can do it because I am not God. I am Pastor Katie. But today, in, God, in one of our readings, there's this man named Isaiah. And Isaiah heard the voice of God, and Isaiah saw God. I don't think God looked like that, because you know what? When Isaiah saw God, Isaiah said, the hem of God's robe filled the temple. So the hem is like this little bit right here. And that filled a building bigger than this building. Yeah, so Isaiah said, God is this incredible, big, and mighty, and majestical, filled with majesty, being, and God's voice is overwhelming that it shook the building. And you know what? That is the same God that showed up in the disciples and helped them speak in all kinds of languages at Pentecost, like we talked about last week if you were here. And that's the same God that was born as a baby, as a Jesus baby. And that is the same God that is moving in each and every one of us. And in the Bible has so many names that God sounds like every voice all together. That's pretty cool, right? So today we talk about the Holy Trinity, which is when we talk about God being bigger than any one picture that we can have for God. And we can also at the same time remember that God speaks to each and every one of us. And God loves each and every one of us. And God is loving and caring, a fighter and heroic. And God is majest full of majesty. And God is infinite. And God is bigger than we can imagine. And God is present in the smallest things we can imagine. And even the smaller ones yet. It's pretty cool, right? <laughs> All right, let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for all the ways that you speak to us in big voices, in small voices, in deep voices, in high-pitched voices, in wobbly voices, and in straight voices. God, we give you thanks for the ways that you bless us with your word now and always. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Can you remember that God loves you? Can you remember that God loves them? Can you remember that God loves them? Wonderful. You guys can head on back. Thank you. Would you please pray with me? Good and gracious God, breathe your spirit into and among us so that we don't just hear words with our ears, but hear in our hearts the message you have for us this day. Amen. So I want you to take a minute and imagine the scene in today's first reading when Isaiah saw God. When Isaiah saw God in all of God's vast majesty and marvelousness and amazingness. When Isaiah saw God whose robe was so mighty that just the hem of it filled the temple. A temple that makes this sanctuary look tiny. And God was sitting on a throne and around God and above God, there were these winged creatures flying around. And these winged creatures, called seraphs, were saying, singing, chanting, Holy, 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 holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory full of the glory of the God whose robe's hem fills the temple. And at the sound of the seraphs, holy, 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 the building shook. In a few moments, when we gather at this table, we will join our voices with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, the hosts of heaven, 
And with the seraphs from today's reading, we will join our voices and sing, Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of God's glory. But before we get there, imagine this scene for Isaiah. When the hem of God's robe filled the temple, when God's transcendence was made imminent, when God's infiniteness was made intimate before Isaiah, when God broke into Isaiah's life in a transforming way, when Isaiah saw God and was filled with intense, radical, overwhelming amazement. And then suddenly, Isaiah was incredibly aware of his failings, of the way that he had been complicit in social injustices among his people, of his own finiteness and mortality, when Isaiah became incredibly aware of his unworthiness. So instead of joining with the seraphs, Isaiah cries out, Woe is me. He confesses his sin. He mourns his own inadequacy. And Isaiah proclaims his unworthiness to be in the presence of God's divine perfection. His unworthiness to see God's self. His unworthiness to join in the song of the seraphs proclaiming God's holiness. After all, how could God use him as a teacher, a prophet, a proclaimer of God's message when he falls so woefully short of God's majesty? Why would God give him, of all people, a new identity, a new and eternal and abundant life when he was so completely unworthy of such grace? But these are questions Isaiah has. None of these questions are uttered by God. God never declares Isaiah unworthy. Instead, the seraphs touch Isaiah's lips with the coal, and Isaiah experiences God's purifying, life-giving touch, and is encouraged by God's boundless mercy and forgiveness. And Isaiah is transformed. No longer does he declare his unworthiness. No longer does he mournfully cry out, Woe is me. Instead, Isaiah hears God's call and responds, Here am I. Send me. He is now ready to respond and serve as God's messenger because God's very self has declared him worthy. And Isaiah is ready to bring God's message to the people because God has declared the people worthy of hearing it. Can you imagine? Isaiah saw God, whose robe was so immense that just the hem filled the temple. Isaiah saw God's divine perfection and was acutely aware of his smallness, of his complicity in the sins of the community, of his own inadequacy and unworthiness before God, and in God's wondrous complexity and wisdom and love. This creator of the universe saw Isaiah, saw Isaiah in all his unworthiness and called him to be God's messenger. And through God's purifying touch and transforming grace, Isaiah was able to heed God's call and proclaim God's transforming power to all the people. I wonder, do we ever feel even a fraction of what Isaiah felt in today's story? Do we ever realize and marvel and fall down at how awesome God is, how majestic God is, how holy God is, and how woefully short we fall in comparison, how minuscule we are, 
how frail and unworthy we are. Do we ever marvel at how incredibly amazing it is that despite the fact that we have sinned, that we have hurt our community, we have squandered our blessings and hoarded bounty, that we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely, do we ever marvel that despite the fact that, what, that we have sinned by what we have done and by what we have left undone, that God offers boundless grace, God washes us in these waters, invites us into discipleship, nourishes us at this table, and invites us to be messengers, sends us to proclaim God's good news in word and deed. I wonder, do we ever feel even a fraction of what Isaiah felt in today's reading? Now, I will confess, today's reading conveniently ends at verse 8 with a proud pronouncement of, here am I, send me. Because in verse 9, God goes on to warn Isaiah of the reality of this call. That the people will not listen. They will not understand, and ultimately, they will not turn back to God. And when Isaiah hears that part, I wonder if he wonders, what's the point of being a messenger if no one will listen? But God tells Isaiah, a holy seed will remain. God will remain with the people. God will not give up on the people. For God so loved the world that God would send a prophet to call the people back, to offer mercy and forgiveness, to offer grace and salvation, even if they weren't ready yet. God would promise that this would be there when they were ready. God was not done with Israel, and God is still not done. God is still giving strength and peace to all God's people, even as it feels like we are inadequate, even as it feels like proclaiming a message of love and grace is brushed aside for selfish gains, even as it feels like hope might be lost. The seraphs are still saying, singing, chanting, holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with God's glory. And trusting in God's mercy, we are able to join in that song. Not as we ought, but as we are able. Trusting in God's infinite grace, infinite mercy, infinite majesty, to transform our sense of inadequacy and unworthiness to a readiness to serve, to love, to sing of God's glory. God knows who you are. God knows everything that you have done and everything that you have left undone. And God welcomes you in these waters. God calls you child. And God sends you into the world. For God has come to dwell with us, to make us people of God, to make all things new. For God so loved the world that God sent Isaiah, God sent the prophets, and God sent God's own self to come among the people as a tiny, fragile human baby, as a person who knows hunger and suffering, and to offer mercy and forgiveness to call us back to God, to offer grace and salvation to the world, to remind us that everyone is a worthy child of God, worthy of hearing God's love, even you. And that is enough to transform our sighs of woe to songs of praise. Let us stand and join our voices in song and praise.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Abba God, you have brought us into your family, claiming us as beloved children. Bless your family of faith with gifts of cooperation and graciousness. Increase our hospitality toward all expressions of faith and teach us to honor our shared humanity. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Your love and power burst forth in the flashes of lightning, the dance of the wind, and the deeply rooted trees of the forest. Sustain fragile and interconnected ecosystems that they may flourish for generations to come. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Give your blessing of peace to the nations shelter all who risk life and livelihood to protect others from violence, conflict, and injustice. On this Memorial Day weekend, we remember those who have lost their lives in war and conflict. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. You are a God of love and not of condemnation. Quiet the hearts of all who struggle with shame, regret, or questions of self-worth. Teach us to forgive ourselves and one another. Restore wholeness to all who seek hope and healing, especially Bob, Geneva, Cherry, Winnie, Henry, Harry, Ellen, Ruth, Sally, Katie, Debbie, Anne, those on our prayer list, and all whom we remember in our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Strengthen bonds between parents, children, and families of all varieties. We pray especially for adoptive and foster families, multi generational households, and blended families. Grant gifts of nurture and patience to all caregivers. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The Spirit bears grateful witness to all children of God who have now come into their inheritance among the saints. As, these, as they lived with hope in your gift of eternal life, so strengthen us in faith that we may recognize your eternal presence even in this mortal life. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you hear our prayers spoken and unspoken. We lift now the prayers that are in the hearts and minds of this congregation this day. We pray for Julie as she undergoes surgery to remove cancer. For Christopher, that you might offer him peace in the face of debilitating anxiety. We pray for Elaine undergoing the treatment of Lyme disease. We pray for Summer and Pat. We pray for Kenny. We pray for peace and comfort and solace. 
Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with one another. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, 
you reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Merciful God, and great is your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Having come into the world, he fulfilled for us your holy will and accomplished our salvation. To explain God's love, to show it and to share it, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me Remembering, therefore, his good command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension and his promise to come again, we give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we ask you to accept our praise and thanksgiving and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us and these, your own gifts of bread and wine that we and all who share in the body and blood of your Son may be filled with heavenly peace and joy, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be made holy and have our place with all your saints. All blessing and praise and thanks to you, holy God, through Jesus Christ, by your Spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. Oh. 
Father, Son, and Spirit, in water, water, and will, the cleaning was a certain, with water and the word, his gentle words were spoken, in heaven they were heard, they were singing water life, the beginning life, water life, oh my life, water life, spirit life, water life. A simple sweet beginning, a loving place to start. Christ began the singing that swells within my heart. His love became my calling, His life my ministry. His name is my adoption into his family they were singing water life the beginning life water life all my life water life spirit life water My hope, my expectation for true community begins with resurrection, his death and life in me. His spirit fills the body, his church through water seas, his promise for tomorrow. His water life in me. They were singing water life, the beginning life, water life, all my life, water life, spirit life, water life, water life. Please stand as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you, and in fervent, Lord, in fervent love towards one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
May the God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed bless, keep, and sustain you now and until the end of the age. Amen. and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. But go downstairs and get sweet rolls. 